it, and it, it is it's deep it is deeply frustrating because um i don't see maybe you do and and feel positive about it and i'm fascinated to know a world in which you know governments are ne are, are in the hands of the food industry the food in industry as you say is, is sort of against us really it's not in their interest actually quite tragically um still you know our health doesn't appear to be in the interest of the food industry uh, can you see that changing or, or do we have to do this all as individuals and, and can you see that happening um i think we have to we unfortunately we have to do too much as individuals and you're absolutely right the food industry particularly the way the food industry advertises itself it bombards us and our kids with advertisements that tell us that foods that are really not very good for us at all are going to make us happy and feel good etc cetera, etc cetera. and we get that message in you know wh wh wherever we go and we now we get it online we get it targeted at us depending on what other things we're looking at it's very powerful and very cynical that's really hard i do see that you know the the rear guard action and the and the vo the voice against that is starting to be heard and, and we've you know and and actually that's one thing about the, the crazy situation of covid that, that that one of the possible positives and there's more than one but which we might come to but one of the possible positives if and when we get through this is that the this uh kind of ideological reluctance on the part of government to interfere in our lives and our health oh no we can't possibly tell people what to eat or what's good for them or bad for them that's not our job as a government well all that pretense that the government doesn't is it's inappropriate for the government to intervene on behalf of the health of its population hello i mean that's just changed forever now. You know, we what is lockdown? What is the fact that all the restaurants and pubs have closed? Uh, what is the fact that, uh, you know, wrongly, I think, you know, the lots of, you know, the, the major retailers are allowed to stay open to sell us food, but not the local food markets. Um, you know, that, so, but we've, that's a total sidetrack, not the point I'm making, but it just annoys me. But anyway, so we are at a time where, where government has had to show its hand and say, we can do things differently we can we can educate people about their health and the fact that our prime minister himself had a severe brush with covid and was big enough to sorry use a kind of unfortunate um pun there but was big enough to admit that his weight and it was a factor in the severity of his symptoms and came out saying we all need to be uh you know leaner and and healthier to deal with this virus unfortunately he then looked in danger of doing the usual Boris thing, which was to tell us that we all had to run around the park a few more times or, or get on our bike. Um, of course, exercise is very good for us, but we absolutely know that you can't transform your health and improve your, and, and it's very, very difficult even to lose any weight through exercise alone. We have now seen a couple of initiatives and some more promises from the government to address healthy eating. So. The, the, just last week, they said they would finally, and this was part of a campaign of ours on, on um, Britain's fat fight, they're going to take away all the sweets and, and, and confectionery and unhealthy snacks from that lethal pester power position uh, uh, in the supermarkets and shops right by the till where, uh, where, where, you know, where, the, where the kids will grab them and say, can we have some of this or where you are as a last thought before you pay for your uh, shopping tempted to grab a, a handful of chocolate bars that's going to change more importantly they have promised to uh to curb the outrageous amounts of of junk food advertising that's targeted at our kids um we don't know how that's going to happen but we we hope it might be a uh, extension of the, the 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 watershed to include family shows where we'll no longer be you know the big family shows on, on, on the weekends, uh, we won't have to watch a load of adverts for unhealthy foods. But there's a whole online world out there that needs to be taken into consideration. And they've promised to deal with that. So things are changing. The government is no longer saying we don't interfere in the nation's diet. But there's so much to do, including the education piece that we just discussed. So we can't do it on our own. I mean, you, you talk about sweet treats and, and being taken away. Obviously, that is not not just kids. Um, sugar is something that a lot of people really feel that they need. And you 
talk about that. I mean, I was disappointed to find out from you, I think that honey, maple syrup, all the ones I thought were fine are essentially just as, as bad. But you talk about retraining your sweet tooth. I'm sure many people listening and, and many people feel that having a sweet tooth is, is something they just cannot do anything about. They, they need sweetness. Um, but you yeah. have ways to, to, to kind of get around that. Perhaps you could share them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have a fantastically sweet tooth, as I've mentioned, you know, puddings and cakes and biscuits. They were my entry into the world of cooking, uh, not just as a, as a happy amateur uh, kid cooking, but, but also as a professional pastry chef for a while. Um, but so, so I, I love sweet things. But what I found uh, in, and in developing some recipes for this book and trying them on friends and family, First thing is you can take about 20% of the sugar out of almost any conventional uh, cake or biscuit recipe. Nobody even notices, nobody bats an eyelid. So then you can start sneaking some good stuff back in. So swapping maybe plain, you know, maybe white flour for light wholemeal flour, not, not bread flour, but light wholemeal flour for your baking and your cakes. Maybe throw in a few seeds, um, a little bit of dried fruit. Uh, using ground almonds as well as a bit of flour uh, where there's some natural sweetness and it keeps the moisture in a cake really well. Um, so I have a recipe in the book and I was hoping to hold up a slice but a member of my family ate the last one about half an hour before we started this. There's a recipe in the book for what I call my seedy almond cake and oh, it's, it's basically... So good. It looks so good. <laughs> well thank you. It's basically just a tweaked Victoria sponge. It's uh, you know where I have dialed down the sugar, made the flour whole and uh, added a few seeds and a sprinkle of, uh, uh, of flaked nuts on top and some poppy seeds. And it's, it's now my family's favourite cake and, and the children aren't quite there yet. But my wife now, you know, said, we've been doing this for quite a while. So you can see we haven't given up home baking. She says, um, you know, she and, and I'm with her on this. If someone's if we go out and someone's made a cake, I'm now slightly bracing myself for something that I know to my taste will be too sweet. And that, that's not where I was even a few years ago. This is something I've done gently, not in a kind of, you know, tub thumping, we must do this kind of way, but I've just gently been tweaking. The key thing probably was quite a few years ago when I stopped taking sugar in my tea. And I got stuck on one or just let half a teaspoon for years. I thought I'd never get rid of that last half teaspoon. And I made a few futile attempts that tended to last just a few days. Then somebody said to me, and I don't know where they got this from. Somebody said, it takes two weeks. I thought, really? I thought, well, all right, well, I'll give it two weeks. And anyway, two weeks did the trick. And after two weeks, the idea of going back to sugar in my tea, well, now I don't, if anyone who's done this will know this. If you've given up sugar in your tea, if you accidentally pick up someone else's tea that's got sugar in it, you don't go, oh my goodness, the dreamy days of sugar in my tea, where did they go? You go, oh, oh my God, sugar in the tea, eh. And you know, that shows that we can do this. We can train ourselves, we can change our tastes. We can, we can you know, we can make things we can make our experiences slightly different. This is what the human brain does. This is what body, you know, we, the same way that we go running, our muscles get a little bit stronger. We get into cold water every day as the water gets colder and, and, and we can do it without, you know, without it feeling agonizingly horrible. We are amazing creatures. We have these amazing abilities. We can, you know, we can't flick our fingers and do things overnight, but we can easily, um, wean ourselves onto new, uh, slowly and gently in, into new habits and different ways of doing things. And that in a way is, is what the whole book is about, a gentle process of tweaking and nudging our habits on a number of parameters, the seven different steps, not with one big idea, but just these different ideas that all complement each other, a nudge here, a change there, move along, move along, and guess what, in a few months time, we're getting so much pleasure from foods that are so much better for us. Oh, there's so.